This is the latest version of the Volkswagen Passat. Though it doesn't look that different from the old Passat. What gives? Funny story, but VW took the previous Passat, swapped every single body panel on it except for the roof and the A-pillars, and this was the result. Here's a side-by-side -side if you're curious. Start digging into the numbers and it's clear the new Passat really is just the old Passat with some targeted upgrades. Cargo space is still a generous 15.9 cubic feet. The wheelbase remains 110.4 inches. In both front and rear, head and legroom is all the same. It's almost like VW chose to invest their resources in SUVs, leaving little left to stay competitive in a shrinking sedan market. So, so yeah, the more things change, yada yada yada. I guess we should talk about those upgrades. The biggie is under the hood. All trims feature a two liter turbocharged engine. No, you can no longer buy a Passat with a V6 and you can't get all wheel drive. The Turbo 4 comes partnered with a six speed automatic transmission while many of its competitors offer eight speeds or more. With a few more ratios, the Passat's fuel economy might fare better versus the Honda Accord, Hyundai Sonata, Toyota Camry, or the 2019 Volkswagen Passat. Ooh, that's awkward. Even if you don't care about fuel economy, you might care about drivability. When moving, as you ease into the accelerator, there's like a disinclination to downshift, and then as you push further, then it'll downshift and give you more acceleration than perhaps you intended. As always, if you'd like to avoid marginal drivability, just drive everywhere at full throttle. That's what I do. Piloted with that attitude, the Passat pulls with respectable vigor. An even greater propulsive sin is how the Passat leaves from a stop. There's no pull, and then the turbocharger comes in, and there's a gear change. It's not smooth, it's not predictable, it's not good. Braking is similarly problematic. The brake pedal sits high, so shifting from the accelerator to it is awkward, and when you press on it, it's like pushing a plunger into pudding. It's gushy on the, on the entry, and when you want to pull up, it's still kind of stuck there. Uh, all that makes it very hard to stop smoothly, and uh, I don't like it. He doesn't like it. I don't like it. On a redemptive note, ride quality is smooth with a soft, floating feel. If you want to put down long hours in the saddle at a consistent pace, the Passat is a fine choice. Oh, and look at how big the back seat is. At 5 foot 10 inches, I can easily sit behind myself with lots of legroom to spare. Headroom is good as well. Beyond voluminous rear quarters, the cabin offers usability advantages. There is a sunglass holder, a sizable glove box, a storage hold near the driver's left knee, a well-placed phone zone, a coin corral that I'll just use to store my lip balm, there are rear map pockets that I'm guessing you won't use for maps, heated rear seats and two rear USB ports come on the highest SEL trim, and if the roomy trunk isn't quite roomy enough, the rear seats fold down. Howdy fellas, welcome to the trunk. The interior also features lots of hard plastic, including this stuff that's not wood, small cup holders, though this cup does fit, and a steering column that catches my knees when I climb aboard. I'll stop doing that, that hurts my knees. Ha. Huh. <laughs> what tree did you come from? Rounding out the interior, we have comfortable, well-positioned armrests, though I miss the classic height-adjustable armrest VW offers on some of their other cars. On the Mike Amusio Elbow Comfort Index, I'm gonna give the Passat a decent, but decontented squirrel. For less than $24,000, including destination charges, the Passat S trim includes LED lighting, blind spot monitoring, automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, and a 6.3 inch infotainment screen carried over from the previous Passat that looks kind of small by modern standards. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are also standard, thank heaven. If you can afford it, we recommend stepping up to the SE trim. Yes, it costs an extra $2,900, but I sure don't want to live without keyless access and push button start, a heated power driver's seat, dynamic cruise control, and lane keeping assist. Do you? Nah, didn't think so. I will add that I wish dynamic cruise control kept a tighter distance between me and the vehicle ahead. And also, it would be nice if lane keeping assist uh, warned you when you were departing your lane. Watch. Oh, that didn't work at all. 
it normally works, but it never beeps at you and it doesn't flash here. And if you're not paying attention, you'll never know. I mean, until the impact. Oh. Hey, fun fact, dynamic cruise control doesn't go all the way down to zero. So cover that brake. All right, we're gonna give it another shot here. Let's see what happens when I start to depart my lane and it'll steer you back, but no warning. Ah, it goes from green to orange in the gauge cluster. Further up the hierarchy, there's a Passat R-Line adorned with the SE's features, plus a sunroof and sporty styling. And at the top, the SEL trim adds luxuries like leather, those heated rear seats I mentioned earlier, a foot activated trunk. First try, that never happens. Tim, I, I deserve a high five. Uh. Parking sensors that aren't quite smart enough to keep from activating and stop and go traffic and automatic parking abilities. Speaking of, let's see how the Passat parks itself. Mm-hmm. Okay, what do I do now? Reverse? Okay. Steering. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm gonna hit the curb. Oh, no. And now forward. You get a pass, Passat. Compared to mid-sized sedans like the Honda Accord, Toyota Camry, Hyundai Sonata, Kia Optima, Mazda 6, and Subaru Legacy, the Passat's base price occupies the low end of the spectrum. Keep in mind though, resale values have a large influence on overall ownership costs, and among mid-sized sedans, there are stronger players than the Passat. Speaking of ownership costs, if like me, you've experienced reliability issues with VWs in the past, Volkswagen's six-year, 72,000-mile warranty might provide some peace of mind. For those who loved the previous Passat, the latest version offers more of the same, plus more equipment and competitive prices. All of that might make the Passat a great value, but it is nothing special. 